because recording is in progress. <laughs> so we will record this class for you as we will record each one of these sessions for you. Okay. And all the slides that you see that have links or action items, we will send to you at the end of the day. So as long as you, well, you registered, so you're here. So as long as you register with an email address that we can send you something to, some people register with bogus information, which I don't understand, but anyways, we will send you the information. Now feel free to copy, write down, take pictures of, there's nothing proprietary here. Don't, I'm cool with that. But I just want you to know, yes, it's recorded and yes, you get the slides. So you're all good with that. Sound good, everybody? Yes. I guarantee you, if anyone wants to wake, make a wager with me, that I get asked at some point over this week, no more than five times, all right, the over under is five. Is this recorded? Wendy, am I right? I've been doing this long enough to know what's right. All right. So ask questions, feel comfortable, raise hands. If there's anything that, we, that you don't know, please raise your hand. Please ask a question. I do move fast. There is a lot of material to cover, okay? I will be training every day. I've got my, my fantastic Microsoft Tech trainers. We'll be teaching different sessions throughout the week. This is a fundamental course, okay? But there's a lot of fundamentals to start. So I will give you a little bit of time during the class to fill some things out, okay? You guys probably will spend more time just clicking through to see where things are at, right? Especially if you're brand, brand new to command. And then it will be action steps for you guys in order for this week to be really successful for you to take action with some of the things we talk about and we say, hey, these need to be done by the next session. Those are the things that will be valuable for you so that when you get to the end of the week, you have a solid foundation of building your business so that when you go back to your market centers, you can work with your productivity coaches, your market center tech trainers, your, your rainmakers, whoever's working with you to build your business. So with that, can I get thumbs up? Will you guys agree to show up and be ready to go each day? Turn your cameras on and microphones to ask questions. Take action to work in your business over the next five days. Because that's, that's a start. A lot of you don't realize this, but you're business owners. So there's a mindset to how you work on a daily basis. You have a real estate license. You hang your license with a Keller Williams Keller Williams Market Center. You don't work for Keller Williams, you work for yourself. All right, so let's think about the actions involved around being an entrepreneur and being purposeful in your business. You have to take action. Well, sometimes business comes our way and it falls on us, but that's not a successful way to grow a business or build a business, right? Communication, picking up the telephone. Are you guys allergic to the telephone? No. By allergic, I mean scared to death of the telephone. Some of you are, right? Some of you, and some of you will never answer a question that I ask. And that's okay too. I understand that. Right? Some of you will never turn your cameras on no matter how many times I ask you to. Not going to do it. That's okay too. We'll get there. So with that being said, let's talk about why. Why do we have what we have? Why was it important for us to have what we have? And by what we have, what we have, I mean command, okay? Why do we provide our own database, our own platform for you guys? It's a pretty valid question. Let me give you a little bit of history. So I've been with KW now going back to 2009. I'm a licensed realtor. I'm not just an instructor, I'm a practitioner, right? I've worked with, I don't even know how many transactions over the last 15 years, a lot. Okay, got my license at 07. Does anybody remember what happened in 07? Market crash. Market crashed, right? And I was in Arizona. So if you want to talk about actually watching and seeing what happened in the market, that was one of the hot spots, right? Out parts of California, Nevada, Florida, Arizona, Northern Virginia. Yes, you suffered a little bit, but I found it kind of comical compared to what we had to go through. But it is what it is. And things changed, horrifically changed, right? What you saw in the news, signs up and down the street, people losing 70, 80% equity in their homes. It was all real. 80% of the market was foreclosure and short sales for a very long period of time. And I got my license at the beginning of all of that, 07. My first deal was like 800,000 by the end of the year. They were around 200,000. The following three years, I did on average about 20 to 25 deals a year. And my average price point was less than 
$100,000. So think about that. So I remember one year I did 27 units for $2.7 million in volume. You were talking about scratching and crawling your way through building a business. And I was able to do that. But at the same time, what I saw was a lot of things. I remember running around my office, okay, 2009, with folders. Remember folders? I had like 10 open contracts at once. <laughs> running around with all this paper, right? I didn't have a digital database. I didn't have digital contracts. I didn't have e-signature. I didn't have a transaction coordinator. I didn't have a lead generation manager. It was me. And I, I had a killer month. I made by 30,000 commission in one month and I was killing it. And then what happened? I hit the roller coaster, right? The roller coaster is you're so busy, so busy, so busy. You don't have time to lead generate, right? Your one job is lead generation. And I couldn't do it because I had so much activity going on to get things close. I didn't have the right leverage in place. So then my business dipped, right? I went down. I wasn't selling anything because I was closing everything. And then I had to build it back up again. So we call that the roller coaster. And the roller coaster is hard to stay off of. But if you're purposeful with it, you can kind of level it out a little bit. It'll never be perfect, right? Gary says, if you read the one thing, you can't be great at multiple things at once. You can only be great at one thing at a time. So we've got that double helix. And if, if you've read the one thing, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the one thing, it's a great read. You can knock it out in like two or three days. But there's a chapter in there talking about the helix about multitasking. And that actually isn't really a real thing. So it's an interesting concept. So at that time, we rolled out a platform called eEdge with a partnership through a company called Market Leader. It came out in 2010, actually. It was a digital database. It was fantastic. It was a systematized way for me to communicate with people on a regular basis. I was building a sphere-based business through buyer contacts that became listings over time, but it allowed me to stay in relationship with people because relationships are everything. Right? We're in a relationship business. You're going to hear me say and others say things. Don't be a secret agent. What do you think that means? Let everybody know what you're doing. Let everybody know what you're doing. Right. If they don't know you're a realtor, they ain't going to work with you. Right. Don't be a secret agent. You got to be purposeful. Got to get the word out. And you got to stay in touch with people. Okay. So Ed's allowed me to do that. Now, not long after that, when all of KW started uploading all their data into the Edge Market Leader, they were acquired by a small company called Zillow. You might have heard of them. Okay. They bought our database system. Terrifying. Think about that for a minute. Now, at the time, Zillow was a company that was supposed to help realtors, right? They're going to help us build our business by selling our leads back to us. That's what they do. That's how they made all their money. They are an agent-funded company. Think about that for a second. You want to make money in real estate? Create something that realtors can pay you for to make their lives easier. You'll get rich quick, I promise you. So Zillow was selling us our leads because they did better, lead generation. Then when we got digital, with contracts, we partnered with a company called Dot Loop. So all of our contract writing was taking place through Dot Loop. E-signatures, contracts, closings, all of that, transaction coordination. Guess who Dot Loop got purchased by? Anybody want to guess? Zillow. All right, you notice the theme. So it was no accident that Zillow was buying these companies that also happened to be in partnership with the largest real estate company in the world. Right. You guys realize that KW is the largest real estate company in the world, both in units, agents, volume, all the above, and it's not even close. So they were very specific about what they were doing. They were gobbling up our data, all the while telling the market and the industry, we're never going to be a brokerage. Well, those of us that were in the know knew that that was a big lie. It didn't make any sense for them not to be. Guess what they are now? A brokerage. Direct competition with us with all of our data because we gave it to them. Right. So think about that now. So what did Gary do? He got very strategic. He wants to protect you. He wants to protect your consumer. He recognizes that the agent is the center of the universe for the real estate transaction. And we cannot be replaced no matter what Zillow and the other third party companies, because they're not alone, want to do. They want to replace you. They want to turn you into door openers because they think that they can streamline the business and take it away from you. That's called disruption. Okay. They think if they infuse a whole bunch of capital and technology into a world of business, it gets easier for the general public. It's not true. 
we know too much. We have too much intrinsic value. Even if you're brand new, you know more than a computer does around how to run a transaction, how to work with the consumer, and specifics about a neighborhood. Right? Computers can only analyze data. They can't. And we talk about AI, what they can and can't do, but they cannot replace the relationships that you have with people. So Gary built Command. So we've been rolling now a couple of years now into this Command platform, which is great because it's a platform now where you can put your data and it's never going to be at risk to be purchased by a third party company. Your data. So if you're with us, great. If you leave us, unfortunate, but great. You take your data with you. I'm not keeping your data. So Command is a safe space for you to communicate, work with your data, work with your consumer, have everything as a hub, technologically leverage your business and stay in front of the computer, commuter, consumer, I can't talk, it's Monday. <laughs> yes, also in front of the computer, I guess. And be purposeful about those conversations, phone calls, texts, emails, updates. When are you calling people? How often are you calling people? What am I saying? What's my messaging? What's my branding? You're gonna hear about touches, how often? 36, 52, how many times a year does somebody have to hear from me so that the moment they hear the word realtor, they think of you. That's your job, right? Your job is to get so deliberate and personal with your personal sphere that when they hear the word realtor, they think of you and they want you to win whatever business you can get. Have you guys ever made recommendations to friends about realtors or not realtors, well, realtors maybe, paint, carpet, landscaping, snow removal, driveway, right? Anytime you have a good experience, you want to refer that person, right? Well, that's what we want for you from your friends, family, and consumers. Did you know that 89% of all people in poll will say that they'll use their realtor again when asked at the closing table, yet only 12% actually use their realtor a second time? That's a staggering statistic. And you know why? Because the realtors are on to the next transaction and they are transaction based. They are not relationship based. The success and the top producing agent Keller Williams is that they're relationship based. Generational business. I don't want to just send sell a house to Yvette. I want to sell it to her kids and her grandkids. And now I know that sounds like, well, that's nice. No, that's real. And I'm old enough and been in business long now that I'm working on that. So I've done parents, I've done kids, and now I'm old enough that I'm going very soon will be selling to grandkids. That's my intention. That's generational business. Because I stay in touch. That's it. That's the secret sauce. There's nothing else magical about real estate. It's staying in touch. That's it. You stay in touch. You're deliberate. You'll be successful. Right, James? Autumn's like, don't call on me. <laughs> Got you. All right. But that that's the big why. That's the journey. And I don't think enough people pay attention to the why. So I'm very passionate. I hope that comes across to you. I care about your business. Gary cares about your business. And I can tell you, I've been talked to Gary and been able to ask him questions, which is quite terrifying in itself. Let me be completely real about that, okay? It's scared to death the, to ask that man a question because I've seen him squash people like a bug. So be prepared to ask the right questions if you ever have the opportunity. He cares more about the agent's business than most of the agents in the business. That's no joke, right? Here's a guy that's built a monster company since 1983. And in his 60s, and he could be retired and drinking pina coladas with Jimmy Buffett, right, and be done. But he's not. He's spending millions of dollars to fight for the agent, to fight for the consumer. So all we ask is that you fight for yourself. Does that strike a chord with anybody? What do you think to that? Does that make sense? Are you aware of some of those things? Talk to me. Hi, Harris here. Hey, Harris. Uh, a lot of that actually did strike a chord with me. Like the idea of the best way to be successful is focused on building relationships, like not leaving out just one transaction is to follow up. Because uh, I have my own realtor, like who I bought with like two years ago or so, who's still like messaging me and email me. And I'm like, you know, keeps her fresh in my mind. Yeah, it, it's not hard. 
I mean, technologically speaking, it's gotten incredibly easy, right? But it's the message. It's the intentionality of how we talk to people. Alicia, you got something for us? Oh, I thought your microphone was turning on. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Yes. Oh, go ahead. So I'm a jeweler um, right now well, in management and how I train people and how I conduct myself. Like I, I reach out as well. Like I build those personal relationships. It is all in the service that you give as well. Like those people will remember you, but definitely reaching out and keeping in touch, um, being personable, that kind of stuff brings your customers back or your client. <laughs> yeah. And it's just about being real. Like we've all been in the situations where we know the difference between fluff and a connection, right? Reaching out, spamming somebody is not a relationship. However, being deliberate, which social media allows us to be, right? So I saw a post today, and I, I actually, and I actually, I wanted, let me see if I can find it. And I wanted, I wanted to ask you guys, how you, how would you handle this situation? So a friend of mine on Facebook asked this question: Realtors. Are food trucks at an open house now a thing? Are food trucks at an open house now a thing? That was the question that she put online. Now, let me ask you, how would you respond to that if that was a friend of yours on social media? I would respond um, <clears throat> with saying that it definitely can be because it would bring in um, more people far as the food truck, that owner and everybody that he markets and comes and support. And it just could be a win-win situation. Okay. We would situation, right? Leverage, right? Okay. Who else has a follow? -up? I would do a poll. <laughs> you would do a and poll. make it a topic. Okay. Yeah. What would what would the poll look like? Um, like a big, basically a yes or no type thing, like getting feedback, getting them engaged, making it fun. Okay. Anybody else have a thought around that? Realtors, is this a thing now? Bringing food trucks to listing house listings and open houses. That was the question. I think it would depend on the neighborhood where you are. Um, I'm not sure how neighbors would feel about that. Depends on how close the houses are together. Okay. Um, that would be my concern. All right. Now let's pause for a second. Now I asked her, I said, how would you respond to your friend who asked this question? You all defaulted to answering the question. Right? Your answers aren't wrong, but you all went to answering the question. You didn't stop to think, why was this person asking that question? Right? Yeah. Maybe I would maybe I would tell them that I would need to think about it and get back with them or something. What if you picked up the phone and called them and say, Why are you asking? Were they you at an open house? house? Do you need to sell your house? Are these questions that we need to talk about? It's a different way of thinking, right? I'm, I'm not challenging you to say that you're wrong. I'm challenging you to pay attention to the cues and the clues that our consumers all around us ask happenstance. Questions evolve from a reason. The question doesn't always need an answer. The question sometimes needs additional thought and an additional question. Why is this person asking this question is the immediate thing that my mind went to. Not, sure, yes, we would do that. No, why are you asking this question is my response to this person, right? I'm gonna call them up and say, I love your thought. I think that's a really great idea. Let me ask you, why are you asking? Were you out? Did you see that? Did you go check out an open house? What does that 
conversation look like? That's different, right? People use social media to let you know things before they let you know things, don't they? Sometimes they're very deliberate. I had a kid or I graduated or my son's graduated or they're asking thought provoking questions to let us know that they might be looking to do something. So you have to prepare yourself through your relationships to respond. Are they changing jobs? What does that mean? Were they out looking at open houses? What does that mean? Are they looking for painters, carpenters, landscapers? What does that mean? How are you going to respond to those? So don't prepare to respond with just an answer. Pause and ask yourself, why are they asking what they're asking? How does that sit with you? Yep. Does that change what you're thinking, Terry? Right? You and others in your vet, right? Y'all went right to answering the question. But now if you pause, it's a completely different question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, um, this is Logan here. I would say at that point, it starts like a whole dialogue, getting into it more. And like you were saying, it would change the question completely and it could get you down a whole different path that if you just answered the question simply to start, you would have never gotten down. Right, what are they really thinking about here? So I, I, I challenge you. There's always another reason somebody's asking a question. Sometimes it's innocuous, but a lot of times they're leading questions. Be that valuable resource to be able to interpret what they're asking. I'm not asking to be a fortune teller. People share a lot of things. Facebook is an incredible tool. Incredible tool. Now, let me ask you this. If this person lived in California, should my answer, my thought process be the same or different? The same because you can... Sure, you could get another agent from Cali. Bingo. Thank you. Yes. A lot of us miss the facts that we have relationships with people that are outside of our geographic location that allows me to present them in buy and sell situations. But at the same time, Keller Williams is the largest referral company in the world based on an agent count. So you have people in your world. Okay. I just got a commission check this week. Right, because I referred a client who lives in Germany and is relocating back to the States in two years and bought a house in Delaware. So they bought a house in Delaware now, but they're going to lease it out for a year. So I got 25% of a $400,000 transaction. All because I had a client say, hey, who do you know in Delaware? Came to me first because I talked to my database, my sphere, not locally but intentionally on a larger scale. Come to me first, let me be your resource for re all things real estate. Because I recognized early on, I was getting questions from friends that knew I was a realtor after the fact. I'm under contract and the realtor says this, I'm under contract and this is the price that they think I should accept. I'm writing a contract, here's what they want me to do. Can I answer any of those questions? No, I can't. And they're contacting me too late. One, because I can't answer those questions. Two, I don't have a relationship with the person that may be representing them. Now, if I had gotten them to come to me first and I recommend them to people and then they express concern, either A, the concerns may not be the beginning with, or two, my, my relationship with them and the other agent could be different. Your resource. Right? Referrals aren't just like, hey, let me pass this and grab some money. You got to have value there. But change your mind. Right? I don't sell as much as I used to. My last four checks this year are all referrals. Naples, Florida, Gainesville, Alabama, now Delaware, and uh, um, actually here in Virginia, I had two. One in Leesburg and one in Gainesville. I'm going to pronunciate your name. Is it Kalia or Kalia? Kayla. <laughs> Kayla. I'm making it too difficult. The A throws me, or the E is throwing me off. Uh -huh. Kayla. Right. Kayla. All right. Um, kind of similar to that. I know you said um, use me for all things real estate. Like I've even been 
letting people use me as a resource as far as like recommending what school to go to because you know build that relationship with people who are interested in joining too so they can like join your downline you're talking about real estate i'm sorry you're talking about real estate school yes like you were saying use me as a reference for all things real estate i like right. that I was saying like, even with people just starting in real estate, like, oh, yeah, yeah. let them use you as like a mentor or, you know, guide them throughout and they can join your, you know, downline. Absolutely, right? People get, look, I don't spend a lot of time talking about downline, but obviously it's an incredible value there for you. It's a value add, right? There are people that make a living just by getting, being proactive and building a downline. So I don't lead with that. But absolutely, I want people to join the company. And if they join by and in naming me as the person because I provided value for them, yeah. And there are people that are deliberate about it. And you can actually really get great money. There are people in the company that make a million dollars a year, right? Just because of their downline is so powerful. Now, that takes time. But it hasn't passed us by, right? That you can start today. So congratulations and kudos to you for recognizing that. That while you're buying and selling for your consumers, you are also building other people's wealth and they're able to take advantage of the KWs, what KW has to offer by building their businesses. And therefore, you get a small piece of that, too. I think that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing. All right. So with that, we're going to kind of jump into some things today. I always like to take the first half hour uh, of the first day just to kind of say, hey, this is what we're all about. And this is why. Now we're kind of going to get in, in, into everything. I'm going to walk you guys through a couple of things. I'll make sure I share my screen here that I think you guys need to know about. And like I said, remember, I share screens with you guys. I'm going to share context. You'll get these slides at the end of the day. Yes, everything is recorded. Okay. So first things first, Mark Center Tech Trainers. So my role, David Donaldson, I am the regional technology trainer. Okay. I'm a realtor, but I kind of oversee this program for our region. And there are Market Center Tech Trainers affiliated with just about every market center in the region the Virginia's region, Virginia, West Virginia. So if you don't know who your Mark Center tech trainer is, their name is here on the screen for you. And it is somebody you should get to know, right? Because at the end of this session, I'm gonna challenge you to meet with them to kind of help you fill in the blanks and then build your business on from there. They're your immediate go-to person. They're the person you're gonna ask questions of. They're the person that's gonna give you additional training. They're gonna help you through some support challenges because gosh knows things happen. But here's what I'll talk about support. Usually support falls into three buckets when people ask questions, okay? One, they're asking me a question about something that they don't completely understand, so therefore it's training related. They might think something's broken, but it really comes down to they're trying to use it in a way that they don't know how to use it yet. Fair. Second, they're going to ask for it to do something that the system can't do. We call that a feature request. And what we say can't do, we're going to say can't do yet because we're constantly evolving the platform. And three, Something is functionally wrong. Therefore, it's actually broken. Now, whether it's broken on KW or through one of our partners, who knows? Those things happen, right? Facebook goes down. Amazon World Services goes down. Google goes down. We've experienced those things recently, right? We live. I live in Ashburn, so I'm in, I'm in data center alley for internet, right? If one of these goes down, we're in a lot of trouble. So it's not always function-based from our side. But these people are your resource to let you know, is it training? Let's get you trained. Is this a feature request? Let's get, because we can provide feedback to KW. Or three, is it actually a known issue or is it unique to you? They can help you understand that and come back to it. Kayla, is your hand still up or do you have another question? Got you. Okay, perfect. All right, so those are your Marksider Tech Trainers. Now, let's talk about KW. But I kind of gave you a history of where we were and where we're going. We use a platform called eEdge. And part of that platform is through a platform called mykw.kw.com. There are still some things on mykw that you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna walk you through them real quick. So if you actually all log into mykw.kw.com, okay? You'll come on this page. This is our old platform and we're progress progressively moving away from this platform, all right? But on here, you'll see a little picture, and next to the picture, if, if you've uploaded a picture, mykw.kw.com is where I'm at. And with all your KW platforms, 
okay? It's your command mobile app, command itself, KW Connect to my KW. Your login and password is always the same. It's your user ID and password, okay? Click on the word profile. You're gonna see information about yourself. All right. We got a question. Oh, go ahead, Yvette. All right, I'm, I think I'm in something else. Mine says KW Connect. Where I'm... Right, I want you to go to mykw.kw.com. Okay. Now, once you're there, I want you to click on the word profile next to your picture. Oh, why did that pop up? Hold on. Oh. You can't go into the room. There we go. So your profile page will look like this. Now, mine's got a lot of stuff on here because I'm involved with multiple things, but yours will just have your realtor and your market center, and you have the ability to upload a photo. You're going to want to do that. I don't put my pictures on my business card, but internally people want to know who you are. So you should have a professional headshot. So if you don't have one yet, one of your action steps will be get a professional headshot, right? Get one for your office or, or hire somebody. They're definitely things that you need in your business. So that's step one. Secondarily, fill out all these. This is a word doc, essentially, right? Just fill out all these blanks, your name, your contact information. Your address will always be, I want you to have of using your market center address. Don't ever put your home address in anything that's a security related issue. You don't want some, even if you don't work from your business center, your market center, you work from home, that's not your home address. Don't put yourself in a situation where somebody's accidentally showing up at your house for a meeting. Always put your, right? You ask why I say these things because these things have happened, right? So always put your information in there. Fill out phone number, contact information. Then there's a bio. Bios are important. And depending on the platform that you're working on, there's different types of bios that you actually have, right? So think about this for a second, okay? At one point in time, probably a lot of you, not all of you, have created a resume, right? That was our bio for a long time, right? We would give a, somebody a piece of paper, they would tell us a little bit, be bullets about us and what we've done and what our success is in, in, in any particular industry, right? I came from hospitality before real estate. So your bio is basically your resume, but more detailed paragraph form. As a newer associate, a lot of people get paralyzed by fear saying, I haven't done any business, so what am I going to say that's going to make somebody want to work with me? Well, here's what I will tell you. The great equalizers in real estate is that even the most successful agents in, that you may know, whether it's in your market center or your general vicinity or with KW, all stay, started with the same number of transactions. You guys know what that is? Zero. It's a limiting belief. Limiting belief is I haven't done anything yet, therefore people will see through me. I assure you, the moment you get your license and people that hear that you have a license, they're gonna think you're an industry expert. So you need to think of yourself that way as well. What people are looking to do through a, uh, a bio about you is looking for a reason to connect with you. Where did you come from? Where'd you go to school? Where did you grow up? What are your passions? What are your hobbies? What are you involved with? Do you go to church? Do you go to school? You're a PTA or you're a coach? Do you go to Little League? Do you go to soccer? You're involved with hockey or basketball or Little League or Girl Scouts or Brownies, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, PTO, HOA? What drives you? What motivates you? Do you have advanced degrees, right? Did you start a business, right? Did you run a household? Did you raise a bunch of kids? That's the hardest job there is, right? They're looking for a reason to connect with you. And believe me, the number one thing for them is not about how many transactions you've done. So don't let that paralyzing fear hold you up from telling your story. The more you grow your business, then you can start invoking that into your conversations. But don't worry about that right now. So write a bio and a paragraph or two about yourself. Is that fair? That's gonna be an action step for you guys. Headshots and bios. You guys gotta start working on those, okay? All right, so we go back, fill out the rest of the, the blocks on the screen, contact information, save it all the way down the bottom. You're gonna see password recovery. If you get locked out, where do we? Where do you want us to send you? Got to share your screen. Hey, there you go. Uh, where do you want the email to go that we reset your password? And what is your day-to-day -day email? Should be your KW email. So I'm also gonna talk about emails real quick. 
Who has a Gmail email? Raise your hands. Thumbs up. Right? Who has AOL, Hotmail, Livewire, Yahoo? Right? They're what we call free mail services. Right? Some of you may be using that in your business. David7, Virginia's number one realtor at gmail.com. I'm being a little bit facetious there, but those things exist. Okay? Don't do that. Right? Be you, David Donaldson. And secondarily, don't use Gmail, a free mail, in your business. Use your KW email. It's professional. It lets the world know that you're affiliated with a company and you're in real estate. Right? There are three levels to email. There's free mail, which we just said don't do. There's KW email, which is also Gmail, just so you know. But it's a branded email for you and your business. It makes you look professional. And you are a professional, so be one. Third is a privately branded email service. Now, as a solo agent, you can mark yourself as a solo agent or a realtor, right? I could have David at DavidDonaldson.com. I could do that. Or you could build a team if you are a team and there's proper ways to do that. So talk to your broker, talk to your team leader about that when you're ready to grow your business. But you could be in business and, and have a team, Revolution Real Estate Group. Right? Then I can have a domain for Revolution Real Estate Group. I it will be an LLC. It will be affiliated with my license. It will be on board in Richmond and on my brokerage. Then I can market myself and have an email address, David at RevolutionRealEstateGroup.com. That's the third level. Also Gmail, by the way. Don't use Gmail at its free base. Use KW.com or if you have a domain name, and turn that in through a Google Business Account. Different class for a different day. Talk to your Mark Center Tech Trainer. But that is the other way you can do it. Any questions on branding yourself or utilizing the right email address? Good. All right. So the secondary question. Well, if I want a KW email address, how do I get one? Well, you all should have one already, right? Because your Mark Center would have set you up for one. Or at least they should have. If they haven't. From this account, mykw.kw.com, if you hover over the word technology, don't click on it, hover over it, because you click, it'll redirect you. Right below, it says KW email. Does everybody see that? KW email. When you click on that, you'll see manage your KW email or sign up. If you don't have one, click sign up, and you can choose your own email address. Right? And you'll see your email right there. Your email address should be nothing more than your name. Even if you're on a team or you run a team or you own a team, make your KW email address just your name. Okay, David Donaldson KW or David Donaldson at KW.com or David D or D Donaldson at KW.com. Just make it your name. Don't get creative. Don't get customary. Use your name because people are going to search by you. They want to know it's you. Okay, you can create a password. Now this is the only password in our KW ecosystem that will be different because our platform it actually is Gmail. Now you can make your password the same as your KW password or create something else, but the password is actually different because when you log in, you're actually logging in at Gmail, right? So when I actually go to my KW email, I'm actually going in through Gmail. So I'll go to Gmail and my email service pops up and all my KW emails are in my Google workspace. So that's the email address that you guys should all be using is your KW email. What what tab was that under again to find where your email was? Hover over hover over technology and go down to KW email. Thank you. Remember, don't click technology, hover. That's the big thing. Now, another thing I'm gonna show you on this page, and this varies from market center to market center, okay? At the bottom, you see these quick links. And I'm in multiple market centers, so that's why I have a list here. But you'll see your market center just listed here. And that'll take you to what they call the intranet. Some of your market centers still use an internal system to post trainings on a calendar. Okay, I don't know who does or doesn't, but I just want to show you where it is. There's a calendar here. If your market center uses this training calendar, which mine is not leveraging at the moment, but others do, you can click on the calendar and see what's going on in any particular day in your market center, 
All right. Now, what you can also do is click on your picture in the upper right hand side and click on the word edit preferences. And the very bottom, you can go to calendar subscriptions and you can push that to your Google Calendar. So any trainings that are in your market center, you could push to your Google Calendar so they sync up with each other. I know I went through that kind of fast, right? So let me come back out one more time. From the home page, at the very bottom, click on Market Center Internet. Okay. And remember, this is recorded and you can always come back to this, okay? Click on your picture on the upper right hand side, if the picture's there. And then click on Edit Preferences. And you can update your notifications, basically how do I want to be communicated, how regularly. And at the very bottom is a calendar subscription. What you want is the office calendar, and you're going to tell it, are you on Google or Apple? And it's going to give you a link that you can add to your calendar. You have trouble with this, like anything else, go to your Mark Center Tech Trainer, and they will be able to make sure that everything is set up for you guys, okay? And that's really all we're going to cover with on my KW, because this is a platform we're transitioning away from. But I do want to, I do like you guys to be aware that you have those settings. Okay. So that is my KW. That's the old platform. We're moving away from that. Any questions on my KW before I move on to the next platform? No. All right. Wendy, anything in chat I need to address? Are we good there? We're good. good. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So KW Connect, you know that this was that other link that you had opened earlier. So the KW Connect is another channel that we utilize. So if you think of KW Connect, really what that is for all intents and purposes, okay, think of it as similar to YouTube. It's a internal training platform where KW is able to stream trainings, record trainings, share documents in training that you all have access to. Okay. So if you all go to kwconnect.com. Now, if you've been in command for a little while, you actually see the word connect at the top of your command profile page. They don't completely talk to each other yet. We're going in that direction. The best place to go if you need to go to KW Connect is log in there directly because not everything is coming over right now. So I don't know. I like to go there directly. I know I'm getting the full experience as you should see it. So when you go into KW Connect, Dot com, you'll log in with your KW user ID and password, and you will land on this page, KW Connect. It'll look just like this. On the home page, the streaming KWRI does trainings every day, two to three trainings a day. I'm training for you from the region, but KWRI will also train for you directly. So what I recommend, so what I do, I have a time block for myself. Every Friday, 4.30, I set up my following week. I used to do it on Sundays, but with my kids and all the running around I do, I realized that I was doing it more Monday morning than Sunday. So my week was starting off rocky. So I do it at the end of day Friday as I tee up my following week. So I will go to my calendar and see what I have coming up, what has to be done, right? What hasn't been finished this week that I need to carry over to the next week. And I'm going to go into connect and see what trainings KWRI is offering that I want to attend or watch. And I'll put them on my calendar for the following week. So if you actually come into kwconnect.com, okay, under resources, don't click on resources, hover over resources, you'll see connect live calendar. And there's so much on KW Connect, you could get lost in here, okay? I want you to be deliberate and go through and get comfortable with these platforms. But I'm gonna highlight the most important things and then you can go back and kind of play around with it, okay? But the Connect Live schedule is one of those really incredibly valuable pieces of information you need to know about. So it gives you a schedule for the next two weeks, sometimes further out than that. What's going on? Some of these classes are, or some of these sessions are technology related. Some are just business classes, right? 
Make your market center sticky. That's a leadership conversation. Master your expenses with PL. Well, that's, that's a business class. All of you have to run PL, profits and loss statements, because you all run a business, right? So learn from the best. Rookies who change the game. Okay, who was new to the industry that, that hit a home run? So we interview other agents. So take a look at these, and you can click on any one of these. It'll give you a little bit more detail about what their class actually is, when it's going to be. You can click that you're going to attend it, which will push through to your calendar. You can export it to your Google Calendar or iCalendar and set it up. And then when it's live, you'll just click on that link. And it'll just open up in your window, and you can watch that live class. The great thing about these classes is, by chance, if you put it on your calendar to attend it, but something happened and you couldn't attend it, we record most of these. Not all of them, but most of them get recorded. So under resources, if I come back to my Connect Live calendar here, on the left-hand side, I see Connect Live on Demand. So anywhere between like 48 hours and 96 hours, they'll usually post the recording and you can go back and watch it. You can search by title and go back into On Demand and rewatch something. So anybody, it's the same type of thing like family reunion. They're in the process of uploading all those breakout sessions. That takes a little bit longer because there was so much material. You can go back and watch things from Randley Reunion if you had access to it. So the Connect Live schedule sets yourself up for success. And I always ask yourself this question when it comes to your calendar. We become very reactionary, especially when you're brand new to the business. right? Somebody raises their hand and says, hey, I'm going to do something. You're going to freak out. Oh, my God, what do I do? Right, and then you're gonna start ripping things off your counter to be at the beck and call of your clients. Now, it's so busy right now, you kind of have to be, so you have to be very careful of that. But if you put something on your counter that you found was important, ask yourself, can I schedule around this? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But if you thought it was worthwhile to attend a class, like these classes that I'm teaching this week with my Mark Center Tech Trainers, nine to 11 every day. Plan on showing up, nine to 11. Schedule your day around those classes don't let this be something that is easily removed from your calendar. If you thought it was important enough to put it there, make it twice as hard to replace it. Does that make sense? All right. Be real to yourself. All right. So that's Connect Live. Right below that, you actually see this Welcome New Associates. We recognize that everybody learns differently. Some of you will learn a lot by just listening to what I'm telling you. Some of you are very process oriented and are gonna have a little bit of trouble keeping up because I'm sharing so much information with you. That's why it's important for me to remind you it is recorded. You're gonna get some of these slide decks and something like this, resources, welcome to associates, takes a lot of what I'm doing and lays it out in quick links to you. We can go like, here's more details around what David was telling us. Or maybe you wanna work at a faster pace than what David is telling you. You can walk your way through here and get more information. Okay. We recognize everybody learns differently. Video, live recordings, fact pages. We have it all. One-on-ones, right? The important things about this, this fundamental training is you got to get the basics in place. It's hard to have one-on-ones with everybody around the most fundamental things because we just can't service everybody that way. So showing up for these classes and going through everything and self-advocating for yourself, right? That means self-educating yourself, whether it's reading, watching, whatever. Before you schedule one-on-ones with your Mark Center tech trainers, do as much of you can to be prepared fundamentally to have those higher level conversations, next level conversations, not even advanced or higher level, just next conversations. Right? They need to know that you've done these classes. They need to know that you know how to access your email, your password, right? And then they schedule their one-on-ones with you to fill in the gaps, to take you to a higher level, to really start to incorporate your business. But self-advocate for yourself. Don't be scared. You can't break anything in here. It's funny. Does everybody have one of these? You may see one of these little, these little things. It's called a phone, right? Terry's what the hell is he talking about but the reason i reference this is this when we talk about technology we throw ourselves in the phones all the time and we just start utilizing them. they're new and we figure it out and we don't allow them to apps and we start playing with things but for whatever reason when it comes to our technology people panic i don't know how to do this i'm scared to death why it's just technology 
Don't be scared of anything. It's simple to use. It's overwhelming because it does so much. And we can coach you to that. But don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of tech. Okay? Tech is leverage. And it's not a replacement. It's not a silver bullet. It doesn't replace picking up and calling people. It's leverage. Okay. The other thing I'm going to show you here is resources hub. The rest of you, you guys can just kind of click around. There is, all right, the other thing I'd like to show you, sorry, I knew there was more. Command your business, okay? This is a micro level training around everything we're going to do this week, broken down into three to seven minute videos around micro level topics. I'm going to be very broad strokes about fundamentals and basics. This gets micro level. Some of you need to really baby step your way through some of this, building your database, which we're going to touch on tomorrow's class. And we'll cover all of these things tomorrow, but here are smaller bite-sized videos that you can go back and reaffirm some of that leverage. So you can always go back into your command your business and look at any specific small level topic about doing things. Does that sound good for everybody? All right, awesome. So that is KW Connect. Now, um, Wendy, would you do me a favor and put the Facebook group link and the YouTube channel link into chat, please? All right, so KW Connect, MyKW are two platforms that we utilize regularly and, and they're resources for you guys. We have extra resources right, that we provide for you because we want you to give as much help. So there's a Facebook group that's local to us at the technology channel that I want you to all to subscribe to and join. And you can go out there, you can ask questions. I post information as I know it. Your Mark Center Tech Trainers will answer questions out there as they know it. And other agents will support you and help you and answer questions if they know answers to it. So it's a great place to follow and go to first if you're having problems with anything, okay? So I want you to join that group. Secondly, I mentioned at the beginning that these classes are recorded. They recorded and loaded on our regional YouTube channel. That's the second link that Wendy just put in the chat. Okay, so after today, I'll load this class. It'll be sometime later today or tomorrow even. This class will be loaded under a playlist called March, Jumpstart and Command, and all five days worth of classes by the end of the will be loaded there for you guys to go back and rewatch Okay, you'll also see, ah, perfect, not a problem. I see somebody won't be here on Wednesday. It will be recorded, okay, and you can go back and watch it. And previous months are also recorded. You can go back and watch any of those. I will tell you that, very long-winded, I cover all my bullet points, but to keep me energized, I change up how I present sometimes, and I evoke different trainers. So you might want to hear from somebody else and see how they presented it, and you might go back and watch some of those previous sessions. It's available to you as well. So I think there's a year's worth of training on different topics that we just don't delete. We just keep those all alive and up there for you guys. So those are important pages that I want you guys to subscribe and join to. And once you subscribe to those, especially the YouTube channel, every time we post something new, right, your settings are set, you'll get a notification that, hey, we posted a new training. So that was KW Connect and myKW.KW.com. Now we're going to log into command. It is 9.55. I know two-hour classes can be hard. I'm going to give you all five minutes to go get a fresh coffee. Do anything else you need to do for the next five minutes. Check your emails, right? And then come back to us at 10 o'clock and we're gonna start into setting up and launching your command platform. Does that sound good for everybody? All right, thought, and I'm gonna put some music on. Trying to. Music 
has a little wound. All right, it is 10 o'clock on the button. Bet. I'm like DJ Dave over here. Nailed that. So, any questions from the first hour? I know I threw a lot at you, and I know I saw a lot of you taking copious notes, but who's got a question? Who's got an aha? Let's change that. What's your aha from that first hour? I need three or we can't go forward. I, it's just, it is the rules. Right, Sarah? Do you guys know what I want for you? Go ahead, James. So my aha was uh, the, with the question that you said, if a friend asked something on Facebook, how would you respond? What I got out of that was to look for opportunities to connect. So look deeper into the question and see if there's something that I can offer or to actually pick up a phone and contact that person on a personal level just to kind of you know re-engage and reconnect with that person because you never know where that conversation may lead. Great. Thank you. Glad you got that. Um, I, I, I love when I see things like I saw that this morning, it just clicked on me. I'm like, I got to make sure I had this conversation during class today. So who else has an aha for me? I need two more. I can just say real quick that um... I've been in command for a little bit and it was interesting, I guess, an aha moment because 
Yeah, the my connect versus when you click on connect from when you're in command. Now I know why it's different <laughs> because I was clicking on on connect um, and like, wait, this doesn't look like, yeah. you know, so so now I know why. So thank there's you. New, there's nuance in what we do and we're we're working in a live beta environment because our platform is not finished and it, it'll never be finished. But sometimes you will you ever like go down to a road and you could tell there's going to be an additional road, but all of a sudden the barricades are there. Right. And you're like, I know there's going to be a road here at some point in time. Well, sometimes you'll come across that in some of our technology. You're like, there'll be a road. And all of a sudden then the road is like, do not enter because we're not there yet. So we are, and we ask for your forgiveness that we are in a live beta environment for a lot of this as we continue to develop it. All right. One last one. Uh, Kaya. Yeah, it was sort of what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, the connections and things. I just moved and am becoming a new agent through my agent who we bought the house from. And, um, you know, I have most of my contacts are nowhere near me, you know, my existing contacts. So I'm mm -hmm. learning how to kind of every relationship now that I've got my business cards also you know taking the opportunity with every single person I meet and you know the people we need for our contractors at the house for things like new carpeting and things like that using every single one of those opportunities as a connection point so it's sort of building from scratch kind of a local database but you know seeing a lot of those connections but not discounting the ones who were from my old areas for the referrals and things like that so you know it's it's nice to see some of this sort start to gel i'm glad that resonated for you just just so you know like i mentioned in the beginning when i got my license in 07 i was in arizona i moved back to northern virginia in 2012 now i was not from here originally so when i relocated here a second time i only knew about five people so I had no data bank that I was building from. So I had to get out. I did open houses like mad. Like mm -hmm. I, that's how I built my business twice now was through open houses. It was a relationship business for me. Yeah. So I had to meet people and, and meeting people face to face was allowed me to connect with them and build from there. Right. All right. Awesome. So we are now going to jump into command. Okay. So I want you guys all to log into command and that website is agent dot kw.com agent dot kw.com okay so that is command you should obviously you're going to want to bookmark that puppy okay i'm going to give you a little tutorial here is my screen share do you guys see my command awesome okay leave it on this console if you go to agent i'll even do it i'll log out agent kw.com It'll, I'm already logged in, so it could be my password, but it'll log in, user ID and password, okay? And then it brings me to console. But agent.kw.com is where we want to be. And typically when I'm streaming and doing multiple things, there we go. It takes a second to load sometimes. My home network is not always the fastest, which is funny because I live in Ashburn and internet should not be an issue coming out of Ashburn, but it is. All right. So every time you log into command, you're gonna let on this home screen, okay? Now you have your experience with command. <clears throat> the more you start using it, it's gonna be unique to you, okay? Because you have customization abilities to look at things a certain way. Every agent can change certain elements around command and their display, and that happens right from the home page. Remember we talked about earlier about just go ahead and click things and see what happens. It's okay. You're not gonna break anything. On the upper right hand side of that first page, what do you see? You see a customize button. Does everybody see that? Go ahead and click on it. It won't blow off, I promise. What you're going to see here are two tiles. On the left hand side are widget list. On the right hand side are the actual widgets. You'll see that they correspond to each other. And if I check boxes, right? Like if I turn on notepad, you'll see that it pops up. If I uncheck boxes, they disappear. So the left-hand side is allowing me to turn something on, and then on the right-hand side is telling me that the display will be there. You also see six dots next to some of these boxes. Dots, meatballs, ellipses, whatever you want to call them, okay? That means I can drag and move. And that's kind of standard across the internet. If I see six dots, I can click and drag. So which means I can change the order of things that they're gonna show up on my homepage. 
okay? So play around with that. And then when you hit apply, it changes your home display. So you guys may play with this, change with it, and realize, hey, I want, cer want certain things, but it's important to know what, what am I turning on and what am I turning off, right? So tasks are, what do I have to do today? Who do I need to call today? Who am I having lunch today? What's happening today? Tasks, product updates. KWRI, about every week or every other week, will post updates. Here's some changes, implementations, things we've rolled out that may have changed your platform. Some things you'll notice, some things you won't, because some things happen behind the scenes, but we'll tell you, okay? Goals, get your work with your PC coach, set your goals, right? If you wanna make $150,000 this year, just, how are you gonna get there? What's your roadmap look like? What does that equate to in the number of transactions you have to do for buyers or sellers, average price points, commission splits? Fill out your goals inside a command, right? Track your goals, design updates. We're gonna talk about marketing, flyers, and materials. We provide new design updates to you for every major holiday or event, things that are going on every month. So KW will roll out and give you new designs. Your database health, we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow, but we kind of gamify some things a little bit for you. Contacts, do we have names, email addresses, phone numbers, Facebook, social media, tags, birthdays, home anniversaries. The more information you have about people, more viable, they are that they're in relationship with you. So we call that health. Like how healthy is your database is based on the amount of details you have about all the people in your database. Notepads, that's straightforward. It's a little notepad, take notes. And recent leads. We'll talk later about Facebook leads a little bit, right? We'll be talking about campaigns, but leads are people that are new to your database that you haven't talked to yet. So when we talk about a lead in commands world, Right. People will define leads differently. And I and I'm okay with that as far as how what a realtor calls a lead. Right. They may say, well, it's somebody I'm doing business with. There's somebody that I'm gonna do a closer transaction. It's a lead. In command, when it refers to the word lead, okay, it's talking about somebody you have not connected with yet. There's either they're either a lead or they're a contact. In realtor terms, a lot of people will talk about a contact being a lead because now they're gonna do a transaction. In command, a new lead is somebody you have not connected with yet. I'm gonna keep it very simple. Lead, a one-way conversation. They registered on your website. Somebody gave you their contact information, but they don't know who you are yet. And you don't really know who they are yet. You haven't spoken. Once you connect with them, whether they agree to do business with you or not yet, doesn't matter. But once they know who you are, you've picked up the phone, you've talked to them, you've established a relationship, you know that they're looking to do something in real estate, and they know that you're that somebody that can help them do something in real estate. You're now connected. How does that feel? You understand that? Is that clear as mud? All right. I'm not telling you how to run your business. I'm just telling you how command looks at things for you guys. And then long as you're consistent going forward, it doesn't matter. But you'll be able to tag people as leads. And I want you to know how we look at them for you. All right. So that's the home page, right? Change all this. And you see here is product updates. Right, February 14th was the last time we updated them, and we're just kind of saying, hey, here's what's happened. There's also what's new back here, or what's next. There's a larger picture, what we're gonna to try to establish over the next quarter. That changes you might be seeing coming into command. We want you guys to be informed. We want you to know what's going on. Your market center tech trainers should be bringing this information back to you at your market center level, but you have the ability to see some of this too. Now. Once you're in command, on the left-hand side, there's a red KW. Everybody see that left-hand side? If you click on that red KW, okay, it'll pop out for you. These are what we call applets. You can even just drag your mouse down them and it gives you their names too. So you can either click on it, which some people like to do, or just hover because you don't know what they all mean yet. These applets are no different than the apps that are on your phone, right? So if you think about command as a platform, these applets, are the tools inside the platform that you will utilize in your day-to-day. -day. So let's talk about what those are. So we're on the homepage. 
You've got contacts. We're going to go into details tomorrow about contacts. Contacts is your database. You'll hold people, people will use the term CRM. They'll say, well, commands are CRM. No, command is the platform. We have a CRM. A CRM is called contacts. CRM's client relationship manager, okay? It's your data bank. They know why we call it the data bank? It's where the money is, just saying, okay. Sarah's like, oh, that was bad. It's all right, I'm full of bad jokes. Tasks, we talked about the task widget, right? That's actually right here on my home screen, but I could actually click into that and look more detailed into tax. Smart plans, we'll talk about that tomorrow as well. We're gonna do contacts and smart plans tomorrow. Smart plans is your, your automation, right? Your leverage. How often do I call somebody? Do I send out emails on a regular basis? Do text messages go out on a regular basis? How sequentially does that work? Do I notify people and say congratulations on birthdays? home anniversary, smart plans, touches, open houses, conversions, anything that's automized on the back end, we call smart plans. And we'll take a deeper dive in that tomorrow, but you can obviously go in and take a look at that. Referrals, we'll touch on that on the last day, but referrals is we can pass referrals around the company worldwide, right? You can actually go to kwworldwide.com and you'll see that we have market centers or offices in other countries as well. So you can actually refer business to Canada. You can refer them to Mexico. You can refer them to Costa Rica, Bahamas, Bermuda. We're in 35 countries now. So if you go to KW Worldwide, you can actually see where we have market centers and you can also see where we don't have market centers. You know, Kayla talked about in the beginning about adding people to her downline. Imagine somebody adding somebody to your downline in a country that we don't have a market center yet. Imagine having a relationship with somebody in another country that ended up founding a KW Market Center. What would that look like in your world? Right, that happens. Those are real stories. So if you know people that live in other countries that are business people, right? It's not just, are they licensed? Are they a business person that can grow something? There might be an opportunity to make an introduction to somebody that could end up founding a market center in a completely another country. There's an unbelievable abilities to make money in real estate outside of just buying and selling real estate for somebody. Keep an open mind to a lot of that. All right, opportunities. Who has a whiteboard? We're familiar with a whiteboard. I actually took mine down. Maybe you walk around an office, you see whiteboards in, the, in, in agents' offices, right? They say names and addresses and different places where they are in business. It's a whiteboard, right? So what we do is we call opportunities our digital whiteboard. So Wendy's going to be teaching that on Wednesday. No, you're teaching Wednesday. Wednesday is designs and campaigns. Oh, you're right. Opportunities is Thursday. My bad. Oops. Thursday, Jerry will be teaching opportunities. And opportunities is what we call the digital whiteboard. Right? It's tracking your business. And it's a lot easier, a lot cleaner than editing and writing on a whiteboard every day, having that open that up. So that's opportunities. Reports and reports, tracking your business, right? Designs is what Wendy is gonna teach on Wednesday, okay? We're gonna teach designs, and I'm clicking on things I don't wanna click on yet. It just kicked me out. There we go. Anybody know what Canva is? Anybody heard of Canva? Right, it's, a, it's an art studio that's online. But designs is our version of some, something called Canva. Sorry, you just bounced me out. So you can create flyers and listening presentations and social media and digital displays and things for Facebook and Instagram stories, and that all can be created in command. So we're going to walk you through that on Wednesday. All of the listings, we have a, a listing service. You guys will all belong to the local MLS, which we call Bright. And if you're around Virginia, maybe in Rain or CRLMS or Eastern Panhandle, different boards, uh, Bright's the largest one. But we pull all active listings into our system so that when you actually create some of those designs and those flyers, all those pictures come. So you don't have to upload pictures. They're all there for all the active listings. We don't advertise coming soon because that's a, a legality issue that you can't advertise those through the MLS. So you can manually upload those. But we do have all listings, not just your listings, all listings, not just KW listings, all listings, right? It's important because on your website and your mobile app for your consumers, which we're going to talk about in a minute, 
they're going to have access to all listings. So you can get in the habit of getting them to use your platform versus them sending you listings from Zillow or Realtor.com or Homes.com or Redfin.com. You want them to use your platform. So we have all those for you. We're going to walk through that in a minute. And then last is consumer. We're also going to talk about that today because we're going to set up your website here in a minute. So this is command. Okay. All across the top, you've got a marketplace. We'll dive a little bit into that over time, but there are third parties that we have business relationships with. And through the marketplace, we can connect through an API, okay, which allows two platforms to talk to each other. This little bell notification, there are things that are happening in your world that you need to know about. So if there's a red dot, okay, that means something is happening or somebody's trying to reach out to you or somebody's trying to contact you, which will also push to your cell phone that they're trying to get a hold of you. So that's what that little red dot is. Question mark over here on the right hand side. How do I get help? Well, I can do a guided tour, right? Guided tours, the little purple boxes that will tour me through different elements inside of command. Again, I don't expect you to remember everything I'm sharing with you today, but you can always go to the purple, the question mark, okay? Go to guided tours and the system will walk you through what you're looking at on your screen. It's great information. You can chat with support. I'm not going to challenge you not to chat with your support, but reach out to your Mark Center tech trainer first. Okay. Cause support can get support gets bogged down with people asking training questions, not support related questions. So I always steer you to your Mark Center tech trainer first. Okay. You can post an idea. So if commands not doing something that you think it, it should, you can make a suggestion. And I will tell you that KWRI Corporate looks at those suggestions and takes us very seriously and allows agents to vote on these things because it's a platform that we say is built by agents for agents because we listen to their feedback. All right. Now, a couple of other important things that are action steps for you guys coming out of today. So you'll see your name. Does everybody see their name on the upper right hand side here? Now, give me a, a raise hand. Is anybody on this call on a team? All right, one. Okay, Kaya. So when you're on a team, two, Autumn, okay. When you're on a team, you will see a personal account. You will also see a team account, okay? Your teams are going to want you, and you should, work under your team account. But everybody has two platforms, right? So just make sure you're choosing on your team account. When you're, when you're doing your business. Functionality-wise, a lot of things run similar, but there's team dynamics that make your life easier, and relationship-wise, you want to be working in a team account. However, under your profile, there's something you do need to set up, okay, whether you're a personal agent or you're on a team or run a team that you need to do. So under profile, I'm sorry, not profile, it's going to skip this profile. Skip profile. This profile is your referral profile, which we'll cover on Thursday, but this profile is not your marketing profile. It's your agent to agent profile. But I want you to go to settings. Click on settings. See if this lets me work here. And it's going to, you're going to see a console of additional items from an editing standpoint that you can do. Okay. And on the left hand side, there's the word connect settings. Does everybody see what I did? I went to my name. I went to my drop down. I clicked on the word settings. Okay. And then I went on the left hand side, I went to connect settings and it says marketing profile. The marketing profile is very, very important for you because it publishes across to your website. It publishes across to your marketing material. It publishes across to a lot of things that you're going to do when you're co uh, communicating with other people. So you want this to be complete first all right now you're going to add a picture which is required you're going to add a team logo if you're on a team or an individual branded logo some agents have a, a logo that's just for them that's okay you're allowed right your contact information details right what's your job you're a realtor or you're a real estate consultant we like to play with words a little bit right what credentials do you have you're a realtor right i have a couple other certifications I will tell you, like, if you have additional education, like your PhD or a doctorate, yeah, throw that on there. You earned it. Brag about it. You know, it doesn't just have to be real estate related stuff on there, right? Now, I also have a, have a degree in mixology. I'm not necessarily going to put that on there. 
um, below that military affiliation. Put your relationship to the service. Either you're in the service or you're a military spouse, right? Because they're equally as important. So put that on it because other agents will actually be able to search for you by your military affiliation. And maybe they want to pass referrals to other brothers and sisters that were in the Army or in the Navy or the Air Force or Marines or spouses of husbands and wives, right? That obviously in our area, there's a lot of military. So that is, uh, KWs actually have a really focused on military. And I just, I love that about our company. Now, Alicia, your mic was open. Did you have a question? Okay, I guess not. Then you see your bio. We already talked about having a bio, right? This is your public facing bio, right? What does the consumer need to know about you? Your contact information, your market center logo, your, your market center tech trainer can get you those logos. We'll show you where to get those. Is somebody, is that somebody trying to talk? Just get some bad feedback there. I'm not sure who's trying to talk at the moment, but I, it's broken up so bad that I cannot hear you. Sorry. Maybe throw it in chat and, uh, and we can take a look, but we weren't able to get you across the page. All right. Compliance. Get used to this. Each office is independently owned and operated. Okay, that, goes, that disclosure goes on everything you guys do. Websites, business cards, flyers, all your marketing material. Each office is independently owned and operated because they are. Right? Your social media connections. Right? How are people find you online? Put those in there. I don't teach you how to build a business page, um, but you should have one, especially on Facebook. Um, it's probably a class we could or should do, uh, but it also may be something that your market start tech trainers are doing locally. But you absolutely want to have a Facebook business page. And because actually, in order to do some things in command from an advertising standpoint, when we talk about Facebook campaigns, right? Wendy will talk about that on Wednesday, that you have to have a Facebook business page. Otherwise, you can't do advertising. All right, and Google Analytics ID. I'm basically going to summarize this without going down a rabbit hole. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't need to know. I know that's not very technical, but if you know, you know. And if you don't know, that's, we're not going to worry about that right now. Sound good? All right, so you do need to fill this out today as much as you can. And remember, photos required. Headshots. Phones are of great quality right now. Until you go out and get standard headshots, get a good picture of yourself. Have a friend take care of one. That's something you can have online because you do have to have one here so we can see who you are. Um, I've been in the business a long time. I've had my share of updated headshots. And I will tell you that there are certain people out there that still use their glamour shots from the 80s. Um, use a, a current picture. Terry's laughing. She's like, I have one of those. Um, use a local, <laughs> local, an up-to-date picture of who you are. Um, Anyways, this is my personal point. I've seen people and go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not who you are. Um, anyways, that's just me. You use a actual picture that looks like you now. All right. Any questions on this profile page? Wendy, anything in chat? Did uh, that person put a question in chat? No? Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build your website to a degree. I'm gonna walk you through building your website. It's very simple and I don't want you to panic. The consumers aren't going to see it even though you're going to make it live right now. Nobody's really gonna see it until you start steering people there, okay? But I'm gonna show you how to do it and you're gonna come back and you're gonna work on it a little bit more over time and probably get your market center tech trainer. But it is something I absolutely want you to launch because from a search standpoint, that's what your consumers wanna be able to do is search. I'm gonna, so we're gonna show you how to launch your website and download a couple applications here over the next 35 minutes. So there's gonna be a little bit more engagement here. You don't have to do this now, uh, but I recommend you start walking through it and obviously will be recorded and there's steps on how to do this as well. So on the left hand side, at the very bottom, you see consumer. Does everybody see that? Left hand side, consumer. 
Click on consumer. This is where your, your website lives. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to end up with a website. It's going to be your name.kw.com. Now mine is already launched, which is daviddonaldson.kw.com. But what I want you to do now. I could not on, find the consumer. Sorry. Where, where was that again? Left hand side, all the way at the bottom. See the word consumer? No, I don't. Are you in command? I am. Click on, click on, you see the red KW? Yeah. Click, click on the red KW. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Thank you. Not a problem. All right. So we're in the consumer. I don't, this is kind of layered. So I, I understand it's a little hard to find sometimes. Um, site and app settings is what I want you to click next. Okay, and then you will see learn more with Kelly guys. You guys all see that? Learn more with Kelly guys. I went to consumer, which I went to first. I clicked on the word site and app settings, and then I clicked on the word learn more with Kelly guys. Is everybody with me that wants to be with me? Okay. So. Go ahead, Diana. Don't, hello, how are you? All right. So what if we don't see learn more with Kelly guides on this page, but I did on my home screen. Should I go back there? Did you already launch your website? No, I have not. So if you go to consumer. Yes. On the upper right hand side, you've got site and app settings. Are you with me right here? When I click on consumer, I see agent site page, landing pages, guide builder. Collection. Mm -hmm. And all the way to the right, you see site and app settings. Yes. Click on that. My apologies, got it. That's okay. Like I said, I know it's, it's kind of <laughs> layered. No worries. <laughs> all right, then you're gonna click learn more with Kelly guides. Now, it's going to ask you which Kelly guy would you like to complete? We're going to complete the agent site. So I hit the dot, this is agent site, and hit continue. It's going to say you're going to leave, and that's okay. You're going to land on this page. And basically, what this page is, is a guide builder. So it's going to be a series of steps. You do not need to know how to write code, okay? We're just going to fill in the blanks here, and it's going to launch a website for you, and that's perfectly fine. Nothing to be scared of here, I promise you. Everybody okay with that? Don't be scared, right? All right, get started. Everybody sees, you might have to scroll down a little bit. Does everybody see the word get started? Go ahead and click get started. Acknowledge and continue. Click that. And you'll land on this page. So what you're going to see here are two pages that work up and down. Okay, the left hand side of the page is what your website is actually going to look like. The right hand side of the page is information we're going to provide for your website. Okay, and I walk you through this in this class after the profile because the profile has to be done first. Okay, so there are some things that I want you to go back and do the profile then come back and do this, but I want to show you how to do this on the call. So that's why we do it this way. But you can walk through this. That's okay. First thing you're going to do on the right hand side is create your subdomain. Does everybody see this? Your subdomain. Put your name in that box. Not my name, your name. And then you're going to click confirm. And what that's going to do is going to create a it's going to create a website for you. Your name.kw.com. Now, if by chance somebody else has your name that's in KW, this might already be taken. So then you add a middle initial or use something else. Right, but your name is tradi traditionally available. I have a question. Yes. And I think um, I can, I think Shelly might have answered it for me, but even moving forward, I'm getting a little confused. My, my first name is Alma. I go by Yvette. So okay. 
I don't want to get myself confused and have ammo on stuff and Yvette on stuff. So what is the best way to do this? What's I mean, on your what is on your license? Alma Yvette. <laughs> you got both <laughs> on your license, okay. Yeah. Um, so on a website, website on a domain like this, go with, how, how do people address you? Do they address you as a vet? Yes. Okay, then use a vet. Okay. Anything that's legal, right? That's on your on your contracts or not, you're gonna have to use Elma event, right? Yes. So, but when it comes to branding, as long as both are on your license, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Then right below that, you've got your marketing profile. Now your marketing profile information will automatically populate if you did your profile first. So that's why I tell you to do your profile first, then all this information will automatically pull, all right? You'll see your bio, your contact information, all that information will fill in for you if you've done your profile first. Headshot, Mark Center ID, all that stuff will come across. Social media links. And at the bottom, you're actually going to have an app link, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. For that one, if I'm going to use my .kw email address, but I haven't like linked that to Google, but it's showing my uh, Gmail address on there, does it matter? Or is this going to be like public facing? This is going to be public facing, right? So it's going to pull whatever's on your, right? So if you have on your profile a Gmail email at the moment, right? Then you would just need to go back and update it on your profile to incorporate your KW or just retype it here. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. Then at the very bottom, I want you to hit save and continue. Now on the next page, it's going to ask you about theme. All it's doing is changing this KW over here from either a dark colored theme, which is more black or red. That's the only thing you're really seeing there. And then it says homepage text. So what this actually does is change what you see right here on your homepage. So it could say, let us help you find your next home or start. See how when I start typing, it changes it automatically here on the left-hand side. So anything you edit on the right happens on the left. So you can you want to personalize this thing so it sounds like it's coming from you, right? How well, would you talk? How would you say things? This is all easy, easily changeable, correct? Like if we fill stuff out now with our current settings, Absolutely. and we want to go yeah, back to it. You know, okay. once, once you launch it, you can you can go back and edit these things. Um. I just like to walk you through it so you hear me say things. I don't expect this to be perfect at all, let alone be finished, uh, just because we walked you guys through this. Then it's going to give you a hero image. So there are five pictures on your website that are defaulted to you that KW provides to you. What I want you to do over time is start to edit those out because all agents have the same pictures. Um, I'll come to those questions in just a second. Uh, all you just have the same five pictures. So what you can do is you can delete a picture by hitting the trash can and then upload a new image. You can use your own images from listings that you've taken, which are always the best to use, right? Or you can go download images just because you've got an image. Remember, you can't use images off of MLS. You don't own the rights to those. You can't go to Google and download images because you don't own the rights to those. You do have to, you can go to sites that do offer you free images. Uh, when if you will put Pexels in chat as one that I use a lot, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, you can do a search on Google for free stock images. Even though you use the word free, sometimes they'll say, hey, there's a pay. Getty images is one of those where they charge you for pictures. Um, but you want to update these with high resolution photos. And you see, this says 1200 by 1200. It's actually 2000 by like 700. So if you use a high res image, it'll format properly. Don't take a small image, which is like 360 by 360. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, talk with your marks that are touching, but we're talking about pixel count. You don't want to take a small image and stretch it out big because it'll be grainy. It's better to take a large image format wise and shrink it. I see a couple of questions here. Uh, Autumn, do you still have a question or was your hand up from earlier? It was up from earlier. Okay, perfect. Alicia, I see your hand is raised. You have a question? 
Um, yes, I have two questions. So, um, oh, hey, Alicia, this, I have really fat, I, I have really terrible feedback. Like you're on two devices, maybe. Yes. So, if you could shut one off or mute one. I, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to go to Kayla. Kayla, what's your question? Um, is it best to use our personal cell phone number or create a business number? Good, great question. Um, it's up to you. So I have a local Google voice number that I use for my business because my phone number, my cell number is actually an Arizona number. So I got a Google voice number that I use for my business. Some people do it because of my situation, like similar to my situation where the area code is different. Others just don't want their personal cell phone out there. So that's gonna be a comfort for you that I have no problem and I would agree with the mindset of having a Google voice number to use for your business. Uh, Diana. I'm not sure if you, I stepped away for just a second. Did you give the broker license number or do we need to actually call our the brokerage? Uh, our it market? doesn't have to be there, but you can put it there if you want to. And if you don't know it, um, check with your broker for the, for the market center license number. All right, Alicia, I'm coming back to you now. You can go ahead and try to unmute again. Let's see how you sound. Okay, is it better? Is it better? No. All right, let's try that, go ahead. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll just type it in Kano now because I tried to unmute it. I'm still having, why don't you go ahead and throw it in the chat? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Thank you. I had a quick question while she's chatting. Sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand on here. I would have done that. Um, was on the, the uh, profile, it has two lines that are um, address and that are required. It says brokerage address line two and one. Um, my knowledge, I mean, my brokerage address is just one line. Like, is there something to do if the second line is showing up as required? I, I split it up with my address and then the um, city and like, zip. Oh, gotcha. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, that could be that that could be labeled better. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead, because you know, a lot of times it's like if you have like a suite or something like that then it will go in yeah. line two versus one uh, stuff I, I wasn't and, sure and the way that it pulls from my profile it pulls the city and state on the second line gotcha all right thank you very much linda you have a question yes hi i am trying to see i updated my phone number to my google phone number how long does it take to go over to what we're talking about now move over uh, to that you updated on your profile yes um it could take a day. Okay. But you can even you can even just change it right under your marketing profile name too. Okay. You, awesome. can, just, you can just go right in there and type over it. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Diana, is your hand still raised? Or do you have a second question? Okay, you're good. And Alicia, no. your hand is still raised. I know you're gonna throw something in chat. Wendy, did she post that in chat yet? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lynn, you have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I actually just got, uh, I just passed my exam last week and this is all new to me. My question is when do we need, when do I need to get like the headshot um, and like the website, all of that, like hop and ready. The better. So well, the better. Website, we just, we're giving your website right now, right? But you can also go buy out and I do recommend that you go buy your name on godaddy.com and then your marks Center tech trader can show you how to redirect that. Um, cause everybody should own their own name and use that in their branding and headshots. There's don't wait, get her done. Okay. And also, um, I couldn't log in onto command. There's, I'm having issues and I, but I don't want to miss your training. So I didn't get to do everything you're doing, but I'll go to it later on. That's okay. Right. Oh, of course. Okay. I want to watch it again and like do it detailed. Thank you. Absolutely. I, no, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here. Look, guys, I, I will tell you, and there are people on this call that come all the time. You're not going to learn everything the first time through. You're just not. And that's okay. And coming back and watching, either go back and watching them or come back to future live sessions, you're always welcome to come back, right? Because you're always going to hear something different and at a different level when you're ready to receive that. So you're always welcome to come back. All right. So we talked hey, about- Alicia, 
think she fixed her feedback. But oh, she okay. was wondering about the email address. Should it be her personal e email address as it's already auto filled? Well, you, you can always change that, right? Would you recommend that you use your KW email address for your business? It's just a better professional experience for the consumer. Uh, and if you are used to using a Gmail because that's just your everyday email and you want to forward those to your KW, you can do that too. Your Mark Center Tech Center can walk you through forwarding one email address to another and replacing that. But I do encourage you to use your KW email address. Lynn, you have another question? I do. So I actually, just like the other lady, um, I just moved here. Uh, I lived in San Diego and currently I pretty much don't know anybody, but what I did stretch strategically is I know I'm going to be a real estate agent. So what I did is I created a, a food business page and um, it became super successful. So now I have contacts. I have people that knows me. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, when am I able to like promote my real estate um, photo or like my business into that page? Um, is it when I get my license or can yeah, I do you it? You got to have your license. Perfect. You know, you pass the test, you actually have to have your license at, at the market center. But Thank you can start strategically planning what that's going to look like. And I, I encourage you to do that now. Talk with your, your PC coach, your market center tech trainer about your strategy going forward that when you get your license, you've got everything ready to go. Oh yeah, trust me. <laughs> I wanted to put all my business cards and all my plates and everything later on. Awesome. Thank you. All right, uh, Linda, is your hand still raised or do you have another question? All right. All right. Nope, I haven't put it down yet, I'm sorry. Oh, not a problem. All right, so we're, we're moving on. Okay, Real quick, um, Alicia's having a problem because it requires the bio to proceed. Um, if you don't have a bio, just put a dot. Can always go back and edit it later. Correct. Yeah, just put a dot. Yeah, anytime there's a required field, guys, you can always just put a dot. I'm lost. That's a cheat. Who's lost? Oh, my mic is still on. <laughs> ah, you vet. We have one more question, David. Um, I, question is, I set up an agent page a while ago. How do I get back to it to change it? All right, so after I finish launching this, I'll show you how to edit pages. We'll come back to that. Absolutely. All right, guys. So at the bottom of that picture page, let's hit save and continue. I'm gonna to try to wrap this up in the next 15 minutes. But remember, this is not going to be perfect for you guys. It's something you're gonna to go back and work on, right? I fully expect you guys to have questions from this. Schedule at, you know, to get this done, go back through the videos and give me the market tech trainer and they will make sure you're all cleaned up. That's not a problem. All right, so when you hit save and continue on the bottom of that previous page, you're going to come into a content page, okay? Every website comes preset with three different pages that are already there. You can add more pages, but it comes with three, okay? So we're just going to talk about giving that information around these first three pages, okay? First one is called company profile. Now, here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to talk about SEO because we just don't need to worry about that right now because our SEO on these platforms are not very powerful. So that's something that can be addressed later, but we're not going to get into that today because that takes us down a rabbit hole that we don't have time for. And the websites aren't powerful enough for SEO to be an issue right now. So we're going to talk about navigation and content. So this first page that you see here is a company profile page. It's just what we call it. Pages are templated. You can add any information you want. It doesn't have to be a company profile. It can be, and that's the easiest mindset. So there are three things typically people will put on this first page. Either information about KW itself or information about the market center that they belong to or information about the team that they own, run, manage, or are on. That's just three examples. This could be, you could talk about anything. Now, when I, when I tell you don't, you don't necessarily need to do, don't turn this into a bio page because you have one. That'll be the, the last page, next page that we set up. So you don't necessarily need a secondary bio page, but you can talk about anything. You can talk about neighborhoods that you work on. You can talk about communities that you do. It could be about KW. It could, it could be about your market center. It could be about your team. There's no limitation 
to what is on this page. It's just a blank page, okay? Now, what you have here on the right-hand side, you see this is company profile. So I might talk about my market center. Okay, and you notice when I'm typing, it's changing. See that? I could change the background image by uploading a photograph. My intro paragraph, which is right here. Should I change the word to 250 characters? You have 250 characters to type an intro paragraph about anything. Okay, then there are two secondary paragraphs. Paragraph one. Paragraph two. Okay, they each allow for whoop, 500 characters. Characters is spaces, dots, dashes, it's, it's everything, right? You have five, limited to 500 characters. And then there's a picture. You see two pictures, okay? You can upload your own photographs to replace those. 500 characters here. The secondary picture and, and you did say that this is easily editable after... we do, once we launch i'm going to go back and show you where you can edit all these pages um so at the bottom you have a footer headline okay and what i typically encourage you to do is change that footer headline to areas we service this is a best practice I'm going to hold off on questions till the end now so I can kind of finish getting through here. Then I'll come to questions. Areas we service. And then in the paragraph, you notice that that changed. And then in that paragraph, what I would recommend that you put, the areas you service. It might be Loudoun County. It might be the city. It might be zip codes. However you want to advertise your locale is okay. You could even say Northern Virginia. Or you could say Richmond, or Midlothian, or Roanoke. List out whatever you want to list out in this little box. It's just kind of you telling the world a little bit more information about yourself. I'm just giving you some examples. There's nothing wrong. There, all of this is there's no right or wrong here okay you could even go back and i'll show you this next you could even if you if you're not sure about this you can, we could take the page down all together and then you can come back and launch it later it's entirely up to you don't panic this is why i lose people they get scared don't worry about it it's gonna be fine i trust it will be fine continue now that next page that comes up is going to be your bio right if you put your bio on your profile, it's already going to be there. If you put your headshot on your profile, it's already going to be there. So you won't have to really edit anything. Right? Your content will say about me. And maybe you just put your name. Ooh. Or you leave it as about me. And what you, how do you talk about yourself? Third person is always hard, right? Bio, about David. Learn about David. Whatever you want to say. Your contact information will all default. It'll be there on the bottom of the page. And your bio will pull from your bio. Now, the way that it's formatted, even though you might have paragraphs, like I have spacing in here, it's going to truncate into one formatted space. I'm not a fan of the way it displays, but that's just kind of how it is right now, unfortunately. But this page is actually really easy because right? your profile is already going to be there. Then you're going to hit continue. And then the next page is like, is a contact me form. And I'm actually gonna show you my live page and I don't care if you copy what's on my website. I, honestly, I don't care. DavidDonaldson.net is my actual website and it goes, bounces to my page. And then I'll give that a second to load. There we go. And under my agent page information, it says, let's have coffee. That let's have coffee is my contact me page. So instead of saying contact me, I change it to let's have coffee. You might say, hey, let's zoom. Let's zoom and have coffee. Whatever. Doesn't matter, right? 
So I say, let's have coffee, right? And that's what I have right here. Instead of, I say, let's have coffee, right? See how I change that? And then I have that introductory paragraph. Make sure you edit this because you see how that looks funny. And you might just flat out delete it. Or like on my page, I have a little bit of paragraph. First step in working together is to find the right need in real estate is to get to know each other and see if I'm a fit for you. What better way to find out than over coffee? I don't work with everybody I meet. I don't want to. Right? So there's a relationship that takes place, right? There's some personalities that I don't click with. So I might refer somebody or we just decide that, hey, maybe this isn't a good way. You got to get to know somebody. So putting that information into a paragraph saying, what are you trying to, let's get to know each other a little bit and see if talking makes sense to do business together. And then right below that, you have a little message hint. You know, again, I'll show you on my website. Oh, what happened here? So this message hint that you see at the bottom, this message hint, are you looking to buy or sell? What is your time frame? Where are you in your search? What is your budget? That is you talking to anybody that's filling out this page. You want them to give you a little bit more information about what they're looking to do so that when you call them, okay, when you contact them, you know why you're calling them. What's their search parameters? Where are they looking? What are they looking to move for? So when I put in there on my page, what it actually says, let me load that back up again. Tell me a little bit about your real estate needs, location, number of bedroom or baths, anything that you must have. I'm really just asking them the question, what do I need to know so that when I call you, I bring value. So on your Kelly guide, that's what you're putting in here in this message hint. It's prompting them to give you information. And then once you hit save and continue, it's going to launch your website. Your website's going to be live. And I'm okay with you doing this because nobody's going to see this page until you start directing them. So don't not launch it. I'd rather you launch it and have it and then go back and clean it up than not launch it and never launch it. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the question that all of you have was, how do I go back and edit this? It's, it's a valid question. So I'm just going to X out of mine. I want you to launch yours. Okay. And once you launch it, you'll see it under that consumer page. Right. That's where we'll be at again. Okay. Now, I can tell you right now, I'm going to run a couple minutes long, but if you have to drop at 11, I understand. Um, running a little bit slow here. If you click on your consumer, I'm just going to come all the way back out to consumer. So, I'm on the, so we're all on the same page. Thank you very much. This is some good information. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> all right. So when you click on consumer, you're going to come on agent site pages. You're now going to see a list of agent site pages because you just launched your website. If you didn't launch it, you won't see a list of pages here. Okay. Each one of these are those unique pages for you. It probably says about me or contact us, right? Is what you're going to see on this list right here. If you launched your website, the way I just told you to. And when you come here, you can actually click on this little eye and see what the page looks like. And to the right of it, there's three dots where you can click and you can edit that page. That's where you would go back in and edit the page that you just set up and launched on your website for all three pages. Now you're going to see other agent options on that page because this is a beginning class. This is a one-on-one class. This is fundamentals class. I don't go into all the other widgets and additional things that you can play around with. Get the basics in place, get your website launched, and then there'll be your mark center will probably, and your mark center tech center will talk you through adding additional pages, which we call landing pages or business pages or home valuation pages or blogging pages. They can walk you through all of that. I just, that's a separate class all by itself. This is just setting up your website. And you'll see here, which if you click live, your website is now live. You'll see HTTPS, your name, .kw.com. That's your website. So that's a marketable live event that you can send somebody to once you're ready to do that. So now by making you launch your page, I've put you in a spot where I want you to finish it. All right? So I want you to go in and clean it up. Those are your action steps because I want you to be able to send people there. Your website's not going to be perfect. Your website is good for one thing and one thing only as far as the consumer gets concerned. Search. 
can they search for it? They don't care about blogs. They don't care about cookie recipes. They don't care about all the things that realtors care about. They care about search, okay? That's important. So once you launch your website, what I want you to do is go to your website, create an account, make a, a generic account for yourself, search for properties, go through the consumer experience so you understand how to use your own tools, right? Come into the website, search for properties by neighborhood. Here's what one thing you're going to quickly recognize is that this is not a local search tool, right? It's continental. So it's not just going to show listings where you're licensed. It's going to show listings across the entire United States. Remember at the beginning of the class, we talked about referrals. Get everybody in your world to search for properties on your property so that you know about it. And then if Vicky's searching for properties in California, I'm able to know that and I can introduce Vicky to a realtor in California. Get your consumers to use your tools. Your website is one of those tools. You need to be comfortable with it so you know what their experience is going to be like. You've got to self-advocate. So you'll see that you can go in and you can search by for sale, for rent. You can search by current location. You can search by school districts. You can search by map. There are featured listings that you can add to your website. Okay. I talked to you about the ability to add additional pages, which I'm not showing you today, but you can go ahead and do. You can search by MLS number. You can search by, I could draw. I could just click search. And if I click current location, this is gonna bring up everything where I'm geographically located. Your experience on the website is the same experience your consumers will get when they use your mobile app, right? If they're searching for properties on a desktop and they leave and they bring up your mobile app, they're gonna see the same experience that they saw on the desktop, any properties that they saved, collections that they made, properties that they hearted and they liked. It's all available on your mobile app, okay? We're gonna download your mobile app here in a quick second, just so that you all have it, okay? Now I happen to be, this shows Jankatown and not Ashburn because I was doing an active search for some family up there, okay? But you'll notice that this works everywhere, okay? They can create collections, they search, they save, they like, they click on, there's details. And when they click more information and they're on your website, you get notified that they want more information, whether it's on the desktop or the mobile app. Or if your clients, your consumers created an account on your platform and they say, tell me more, Dave, you'll see right here. Ask your agent. I receive a notification that this client is looking for information on this property and this property happens to be in Philadelphia where I am not licensed, but I still get a notification that they wanted more information on this property. Then I will contact an agent in Philadelphia or I may contact, depending on who this person is, right? And say, hey, I got somebody that you need to talk to. Now, this is somebody, friends and family that's in my database. I'm gonna have a conversation first. Hey, I noticed you're looking for properties in Philadelphia. What's happening? Oh, I got a job change or a relocator. I'm actually looking for something for my son, my cousin, my daughter, my aunt, my uncle, my parents, whatever. Great, I can help you with that. Let me introduce you to XYZ agent. They can also schedule a video tour, right? Times and dates, what platforms they want to use. You need to throw yourself into this, okay? And get comfortable with it, just like your consumers were. And then when you create an account, create a dummy account with your non KW email and like properties, because I want you to see that experience of how properties come in or contact come into command for you. So you're ready for it when your consumers start using it. Now it's 11 o'clock and I know that I'm sensitive to time and there's something I didn't show you yet, which was your mobile app. So I want you to all get your phones out. I want you to go to your app store, whether it's Google or Apple, doesn't matter. And if you haven't downloaded the KW mobile app yet, I want you to do that. I have a quick, very quick question if you, if I may. Hold on, I, I just, is it about the mobile app? No. Okay, let's hold it, okay? Okay. 
All right, so I, I want to make sure everybody has their mobile app downloaded. So go to your Google Store, download your mobile app. I gotta sync some things up here real quick. Sorry. Are you talking about the command mobile app or the uh, nope. Nope. KW uh, your, buy and your, sell your real K, estate? You're buying and selling listings. Your KW real estate app. Come on, connect for me. I'm going to show you. So when you download it, I want you to see your experience. I want you to be know how to. My phone doesn't want to connect. Why is my phone not connecting? So it's connected. All right. So you guys should be seeing my screen. Are you guys see my cell phone screen at this point? Yes. All right. Awesome. So this is my phone, okay? And here's my app. So I've downloaded my KW Real Estate app. So understand that your KW Buy and Sell app is a search app, okay? Now, when you go to log in here, it doesn't know that you're a KW Realtor. So you have to let that go for a second. You're not gonna log in with your KW credentials. You're actually gonna create an account like a consumer would. So that's why I tell you to use a generic third party Okay, account. And then on the bottom right hand side where it says more. Now, I want you to do, you should only have to do this one time. And then when you share it, always be branded to you. But the first time you need to choose you. If you go to more at the top of that page, now I'm already connected to me myself, but you won't be. So it's going to ask you to connect to an agent. Or when you loaded the phone the first time, it'll ask you to select an agent. Select yourself. You have to go in and select yourself. Then with, it's branded to you, okay? And now every time you share your app and your consumer downloads it because you shared a link with them or they went to a landing page, it'll, it'll automatically brand you to them. That's how you share. So part of your homework assignment today is to make sure your phone is connected, you create an account, it's connected to you as your realtor, and then you share this with 10 people. You want to start sharing this with 10 people a day. So in order to share, when you click the share button, so you either, A, you can just click copy, which copies the link, and you can just text that to people. Or if you click share the KW app from your phone and you go to your messenger platform, a message will pop up with a link. And that's your code. That code is unique to you. Okay. And then what's weird to you is that it says, hi, I use search for homes with my agent, David Donaldson. But you're like, wait, but I am David Donaldson. I, I know that. But the way that this is built, it's built for your consumers. And they want your consumers to be able to easily share this app for you, right? Because Sarah, you might want to share this, or your parents might share this with each other, or your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles, right? You want them to be able to share it. So the terminology that pops up, it talks about you in the third person. If it's you sharing it for yourself, you can just click in here and edit this text message. But it gives you a default text message so your consumers have something to send. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. That's usually what confuses people a lot of times. Like, why does it not know it's me? It, it, it just doesn't. There's no way for it to know that it's you. It knows that your realtor is whoever you chose, but it doesn't know that you were that realtor. Now, here's a great thing. Every time you share this and they download it and they create an account, they're automatically going to get loaded into your command. And you're going to be able to know, we'll talk about this later, everybody in your command account, you'll be able to see who's downloaded your app. And then you'll be able to see everybody and all the properties that they're looking at. That's why it's important for them to use your tools and not be sending you properties from Zillow or Redfin or other or Realty.com, getting them in the habit of using your devices and you can see everything that's happening. All right, now let me come back. Now, just like the website, I want you to go in your mobile app. I want you to search for properties. I want you to look at properties. I want you to draw. I want you to click. I want you to like. I want you to click save searches, okay? I want you to change your display level, right? Which means if you take your two fingers 
and flick up on your screen, okay, this will actually change to a 2D view on your map. Ooh. Zoom in here. See how everything's flat? And then when I do this, I'll be able to actually see. Make a liar out of me. Let me zoom into a micro level. There it is. Right. So my display changed. It goes to like a T 2D view to actually look at elevations. There we go. See how the elevations are popping up? That's with the two finger swipe on your screen. Just a cool little little feature for you guys to take a look at. But I want you to heart properties. I want you to like properties. I want you to save properties because I want you to understand the experience of what it's like for your consumer. So that is, those are some of your action steps for today. Okay. Now, one, and I will answer questions. I'm going to come back to my screen here. Make sure I covered everything that I was supposed to cover for you guys today. All right. So we did, we did an app tour. We did app sharing. So a couple things that I want you to do today is fill out your consumer profile. We talked about that. I want you to go buy it and create a GoDaddy account and buy your domain name. If you do that, your Mark Center Tech Trainer will help you redirect your website so you have a branded name. DavidDonaldson.com is an example of that. Okay, we launched your website. I'm gonna give, oh, why is this going so fast? Talked about all the pages on your website. These are the links that we talked about today that I'm also gonna share you this slide deck so you have everything. Sorry, I'm bouncing too fast. What's next? Finish your marketing profiles, get a bio, get a headshot, get your Mark Center Tech Trainer logos, or uh, sorry, your logos from your Mark Center Tech Trainer. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna talk about tags and contacts, right? So I want you to start pulling your contacts. For what you guys, what does that look like? If you've been married, you might have a wedding list. You might have Christmas card list. You might have a Facebook list. You might have a tickler file or index cards. I want you to start building an Excel spreadsheet of contacts, names, email addresses, home addresses, things that we can populate for you inside a command. Okay, so what I'm going to send you today with part of the information is an Excel sheet that you can start filling in. I just want you to start populating it. Put 10 people on it, put five people on it, I don't care. Tomorrow we're gonna to show you how to load that. We're gonna talk about tags. I want you to start thinking about tags. What do people have in common in my database? Are they from my hometown? Right? Philadelphia, that's a tag. Are they past clients? That's a tag. Are they from a previous place of employment? That's a tag. Are they from my college? That's a tag. What do people have in common with you? So when you go to filter your database out later, you can look at certain, certain subjects of people. Okay? So I want you to be prepared with that. So tomorrow when we come into contacts and smart plans, we'll show you how to start building and adding people you, to your database, either individually or by bulk. And that spreadsheet is something that's going to help you. And Jerry's gonna walk you guys through all that tomorrow. Um, it's now 11.10. I did say I have a lot of time for questions and I'm already long. So why don't, if you're still with me here, who's got a couple of questions? Questions? Yes, when we do the download the mobile app, I know you said don't use your Keller Williams. So the email address that you put in to set it up, it has it's not going to be seen. It's just basically you, what you're doing is you're going to be creating. So in this case, I actually want you to use your your Gmail account, right? Your extra Gmail account. You're just going to create at an event. Right, and think of yourself as the consumer. You're just creating a dummy account. So I actually, what I did is I put it in my kid's name. Okay. So I, I called it my kid's name. I used the third party email that I use for spam collection. 
and I just created an account that way, and that's my test purposes. Okay. That's the best way to go about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. James, are you scratching your head or do you have a question? I can't tell. Your mic's not on. You still don't have your mic on. You can, you can click on your picture and hold your space bar. That'll unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if I'm already utilizing Rain as my uh, search to send clients uh, listings, mm -hmm. do I now use the KW site to send them listings, or can I do, still do both? You can do both. Uh, here's my recommendation to that because everything is so hot right now. So if I have clients that are on search that are just looky loos, then I have them on my consumer. I, I try to transition into my consumer platform. When I have clients that are in a buy now mode, I will set them up on an MLS search because I know that's the most up to date and fastest way they're going to get information that they need to know. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's how I handle that. The 80%, I just let them use my platform. The the 10% when they're live, I'm, I'm going to set them up on an auto MLS search just so nothing gets missed. All right. Um, I don't see any other. Oh, Diana, do you have a, a hand raised? So just to confirm, mm -hmm. which um, we set up our the mobile app with mm -hmm. a random email, one of our random emails. Oh. And then we search for our agent app. You're gonna choose yourself, right? You're gonna go in, maybe you call the, your consumer Grace Diana, right? And then you're gonna, you're gonna create an account with a generic email, and then you're gonna go in and choose Diana Grace as your realtor, right? Thinking. Now, once you've done that, and you share, you click that copy code, every time your consumers download that account with that code, right? it's important that they use that code, then they don't need to search for you. Got it. The code will automatically brand them to you. But so the where first does that time code come from? What's that? Where does that code come uh, from? So on the app itself, when you click share, that code is in the text message. Got it, I see, I get it, I'm so sorry. No, okay. no, no, don't, don't pause. I do wanna show you, there's another place where it's at too. Actually, under your consumer, remember when we set up your consumer and it showed you your mobile app? Mm -hmm. So inside a consumer, inside a command, right? Site and app settings, URL, it actually tells you what your app code is right here. Okay. And if you copy that, you can actually, so I will tell you, agents ask me all the time, how do you get people to download this? The best conversion level to get people to downloading your app is one-on-one. -on -one. If you just say, hey, hey, download my app through an email campaign, they're not going to do it. So direct text messaging, Facebook direct text messaging, they will do it. So I always be sure that I just, I give them this direct code, right? And I send it to them so that they have it. And here's a little shortcut that I love and I've done on my phone. If you guys wanted to learn something really cool, like advanced second level stuff. So that copy code you're gonna see is gonna be a landing page, okay? And you see how it's got my name because it's branded to me, right? And if they were to go into the App Store or Google Play and they download it, it's gonna brand them to me. But if you actually were on this page and you hit right click, you're gonna see this create QR code. Can you show your page? Oh, I'm sorry. That would help, huh? <laughs> Let's check that out. I'll come back out just so you guys know what I did. Mm -hmm. Command, right? I was in consumer. I went to site and app settings. And then I went to URL. Now this code right here is specific code for your unique identifier app. And what I did was I just opened it up a new tab up here. And this is what the landing page would look like. And if they were to download, it'll brand to you. And what I did on this page is I right click, see this create code, QR code? 
you create that and download that. You can share that and they can take a picture of that and it'll take you to downloading that listing. So what I've done, and I'll bring my phone back up here, the uh, escape. I downloaded that QR code. I emailed it to myself. Now, again, you might need to check with your Mark Center Tech Center to get a little bit extra help here, but I'm just kind of giving you some cool stuff. And I'm going to share my screen real quick. But I've emailed myself that QR code, emailed it, then went into my email on my phone and saved that QR code to my home screen. So anytime I meet somebody new, I just bring up my QR code and have them take a picture of that, and it'll ask them to go to that landing page and download my app. Right click on any page, you can generate a QR code. Save that QR code to your phone's home screen that brands it directly to your mobile app. So what you will see here, back on my phone, under my little home screen here. See how this little favorites? Oh, my link broke. I have to see what happened there. Oh, I might need to new. I have to upload a new link. Anyways, I had that saved on my phone so that I could share that on my home screen. I see that. And then I share it on my home screen so they can just take a picture of it. That's advanced stuff. You don't really need to worry about that, but it's just for those of you that are into that cool stuff. That's it. Yvette, you got a question? Yes. I'm I'm a couple of steps back, but um when I click in to select myself as a as the agent, someone else is already my agent. So you were using the app for somebody else? No, I made I set up the account for the mobile app. And when I hit on more to kind of like select my own self. Yeah. And it says your agent is Tom Weir. Interesting. So what you can do that it sounds like whoever are you in Tom's office? Yes. Uh it just sounds like whenever this was set up or somebody set this up for you, they chose Tom. So what you can do is you go here, go to your more button. Uh -huh. And then I forget exactly where it's at. Uh, there you go. All right. So click on Tom here where it says view profile. Uh -huh. Click on that. Scroll down and click remove agent or find agent. Okay and then search for you and update that connection. Okay. Good point. And it's always good to check to make sure you're connected to the right person, right? Yeah. I don't share. Go ahead, Diana. Um, so I, when I put in my agent, um, when I put in myself mm -hmm. as the agent in the search bar, it shows nothing. You don't see your name? No. Mm -mm. It, when, when did you join KW? Uh, last week. It's possible you're not in the system yet. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, some market centers, depending on when you've joined and when you're updated, right? It takes a couple of days to process through and some market centers may wait till your license on board. So different offices do different things. Oh, gotcha. I have not received my license from That's people. probably what's holding you up. That makes sense. Cause okay. Good okay. question though. Thank Bye. you. Didn't anything show up me either when I search for myself is find an agent. Remember, it's going to it's going to search for you by your name that's on your license and what's on your license is going to be your market center. So you told me your name was Emily Yvette, right? Emily Yvette, yes. So try searching for yourself that way. OK. Uh, Vicki, go ahead. I am really, I'm not an agent, but I'm working with my sister who is an agent okay. and I just logged myself in Get and I'm trying to do the same thing they just said and Kim doesn't come up. Um, and I know she has a website and everything. Is there a, is there a specific place on the website that maybe we don't have her name in there or it will be, it'll, for about a month? 
it would come up any however she so basically what kw does and your mark centers will do their name will be whatever is on their license and what is ever and so you have to check their uh my kw profile whatever their name is on their my kw profile is how that they will surface for the mobile app yeah she should be under kim mickelson so i don't know i'll have to ask her okay <laughs> the, what i would do is if it's not surfacing connect with your mark center tech trainer and see what's going on there okay thank you not a problem all right, so with that, I have to bounce to my next call. Uh, so like I said, you'll receive an email from us uh, with all the information that I promised you would have from today, so at some point later today. Um, and tomorrow, Jerry will be leading, be leading you guys all around contacts and smart plans. So the more actions you take today and start praying, the, the better each day will be for you so you don't fall behind. That's just my best recommendation for everybody. But I appreciate you guys all showing up today. I look forward to working with you all. And cheers to your success in real estate. Thank you. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, David.